Hi guys, I wanted to show you what gear I'll be taking on the Appalachian Trail for my upcoming through hike. So we'll start with the big three. The first thing that I'll be taking is the Lighten Equipment Revelation. Um, it has uh, buttons on the foot box so that I can fully open it up. It's 10 degrees and only weighs 24 ounces. So hopefully that should keep me warm. Also, I'll be taking the uh, Thermarest X-Therm. It's something that I've been using for a while, for about two years for uh, winter backpacking. And since the only other pad that I have is the uh, Z-Lite, I decided to bring the X-Therm at least for the beginning when it's going to be much colder out to make sure my back stays warm with the quilt. And then I'm pretty sure I'm going to be taking a pillow with me to just make sure I have a better sleep each night. Um, sometimes I take the uh, Z-Packs bag, but um, if it's really cold, I won't have any clothes to stuff into the bag to make a pillow so this gives me a reliable option for a pillow every single night even if I'm using all my clothes and then for shelter I'm going with the Z-Pack Soulplex I know a lot of people are going with the duplex but I came from using a tarp tent notch so this actually gives me a little bit more room than what I had and for me, I don't feel like I'm missing out on the extra room, so I just went with the Soulplex, and I got two MSR Groundhog stakes for the vestibules, and then the rest are the Z-Packs uh, mini uh, Groundhogs that uh, Z-Packs sells. And then over here, it is the Plante Pack Simple Pack, and... I'm just on the cusp of being able to use this relatively comfortably because my total base weight's about nine and a half pounds. So with any frameless pack as this is, it um, really can't carry as much weight as a, a frame pack is, but the frame it isn't really needed uh, under a certain point so nine and a half pounds is kind of pushing it but with the when I get my summer gear in it's going to be a lot better and a lot more comfortable but for now I'm just going to push through with using this one just all the way through to start I really enjoy the uh, bottom mesh pocket to store my gloves and um my snacks for the day so that I never have to take my pack off if I want to, uh, you know, eat anything. I also have in here a like trash compactor bag, it's a Nyla Flume bag, which is a little bit lighter, but every ounce counts. Also, Two smart water bottles, um, right here I have the two sports ones, but I think I might do like one, one liter bottle and then maybe a smaller one. I don't know. Because I only really want to carry about one liter um, each day. And then also for some extra storage or for a dirty bag so that I can filter out my water. Uh, I have the ever new here, um, yeah, in a small little scoop. And for the filter, I'm going to go with the Sawyer, Sawyer Squeeze. It's not much heavier than the Mini, but it, the flow rate is three times as good, I think. And this is the Rocket Pure Hand and uh, Foot Balm. So... This is what I used on the Superior Hiking Trail to just moisturize my feet because if it rains for a very long time or even 
well, even if you're walking through mud or anything, your feet will end up tending to be very dry from having wet feet all day. So at the end of the day, or even during lunch, I'll moisturize my feet with this and just make sure that, you know, my feet are in good condition. And then I also have the Gulban Friction Defense. So this is just an, pretty much an off-brand to the Body Glide. It seems to be about the same exact thing to just prevent chafing. And I'll probably have chafing in the beginning and no one wants chafing. So this is always good. And then hand sanitizer. I have the little plastic thing to hang on my pack just so that I don't have to go searching through my entire pack to find the hand sanitizer because i got to keep my hands clean. And then cook system. It's pretty simple. I got the uh, Tooks long handled spoon with the uh, polished bowl. So easier to clean. Just feels better too, I guess. Uh, not sure if I'll take the lid. I'm probably going to take the lid and not use foil because the one time that I did use foil, it was actually too light and kind of just blew away. So this, even though it's a little bit heavier, at least it stays down on the pot and helps uh, with boil times. And then what I wrap around my pot is a pot cozy. So especially in the winter, um, trekking poles, they're the black diamond uh, ergo cork poles. I've been using them for almost three years now. So they've been treating me well and I don't really see a reason to get rid of them. So I'm still using them. And then what's in this bag is just, it says Sea to Summit, but it's just cord line for bear line or whatever to hang my food bag. So Lawson bear line. It glows really well when lights shine on it. It's great. And then I also have my 16 liter food bag. So this should be plenty of size. It's more open so you can really dig in, see all your food. It's similar to maybe something like the uh, Z-Pax food bag. So this is kind of what, what I wanted. Something that I can go in and look at all of my food at once and try to figure out what I want to eat. It's very accessible. And then all the way up over here. Over here is my electronics bag. So far so good. The Nightcore tip has been treating me well. I clip it to my trekker hat to, to basically uh, use it as a headlamp. And then it has three different modes, a one lumen, 35, and a like 120. So it has plenty of light. It does not last as long as other like headlamps, but the whole point is that it does have on the side here, underneath here, it has a rechargeable ports, so I can always recharge it if it ever gets low. And that's why I'm bringing a in here. A anchor 10,000 milliamp hour uh, external battery. So this will charge my phone and this will charge my rechargeable light that will probably need recharge every once in a while. And yeah, so good for emergencies. 10,000 milliamp might be a little bit overkill for uh, only be having the recharge of these two things, but never know. And then I have two cords in here, uh, one as a uh, micro USB 
and another one is a USB-C. And then I also have just a mediocre pair of headphones that uh, I can listen to music on the trail, podcasts and stuff without worrying about ruining good headphones. And to charge all of it, since I might want to charge my phone and the external battery at once, I'll have a dual port uh, one here. So outputs, uh, pretty high amps and can charge both very quickly. As for clothes, first thing, I have a uh, Melanzana micro grid fleece hoodie. So this, just with itself alone, can keep me warm down to 40 degrees. So that's a good mid layer to kind of insulate me. As uh, for mostly sleep clothing, I have the... Uh, Patagonia Capilina thermal weight hoodie. So I can either use this on the trail as a base layer or at camp I can put this on to kind of keep me warm and take off my sweaty clothes so that are keeping me cold. And then um, I just have like a mid weight long johns to go on my legs at camp. So I'm just going to get much colder at camp. And then, mostly, especially if it's going to be like about 50 degrees, I'm going to be rocking the shorts. Uh, running shorts with a uh, liner in them. And then, just going to use those. Ugh. And if it does happen to be very cold uh, when hiking, if it like freezing temperatures, I can always wear this over top of it, which is a nice cheap ripstop nylon windbreaker pants that I found on Amazon. And everyone needs their puppy jacket, so I got a Mont Bell down anorak jacket. Doesn't weigh too much, very light. And it's just something to wear when I camp. And uh, the fleece will be used mostly while hiking. Then I can layer them all in order to make myself warm at camp. Some of the accessories, I have the, just a Carhartt fleece beanie to keep my head warm when nights get really cold I also have I do like fleece a lot for uh, if things get wet it stays keeps you pretty warm still so I have uh, fleece gloves as well these ones are uh, just from REI and something I kind of missed a few things I got the a buff. I had an off-brand buff before, but this buff, the actual name brand buff, feels a lot better, seems a lot more durable, and I just like something to use as a, a sweatband um, and to just clean stuff off. It's kind of nice. It's uh, something that will last a little bit longer than just a bandana, and it's actually a little bit more versatile. So. A buff is always nice to have in addition to uh, a good hat. And then I've been rocking the frog togs for a long time. This is actually my uh, second one since the other one has been uh, through a lot. Yeah, used that one for like two years so that one actually has a lot of pinholes in it and it's not as waterproof as it once was so I got a new one. Uh, maybe in the future I'll get a more durable rain jacket, but for now this one works just fine, I think. And then I'm also uh, using the trying out, at least. Uh, 
on my last trip I tried them out four day hike they work pretty well the ultra lone peaks they have a nice gator trap to put your uh, gators on which I use the uh, dirty girl gators with that to just keep out all the dirts dirt and sand and rocks out of my feet so I bought these seal skins Gore-Tex well not actually Gore-Tex but they are waterproof socks which have this like rubbery material kind of in between the uh, cloth of the sock so they are completely waterproof they're relatively breathable for a waterproof sock my feet don't sweat too much in them and uh this this way if it's a cold rain or if it's if i'm hiking through snow or something like that this will at least help keep my feet warmer uh through cold rainy situations and then i'll be wearing the darn tough socks and here's my spare darn tufts that uh, I'll bring in two pair and I'll just swap them out each day or swap them out whenever one's wet and try to dry the other ones. I don't think I'll be bringing a uh, pair of sleep socks. I've never really had an issue with uh, cold feet and uh, never really had an issue with uh, sleeping in damp socks. Um, yeah. Usually they're fine. I also kind of skipped over this uh, sit pad. So the sit pad is I got from AliExpress for a dollar and I kind of wore out the one I had after using it for about a year so I'm bringing another one. They're not bad, they keep your uh, but dry and uh, keep the cold off and it gives you somewhere to sit basically so it's just always better to sit on a nice cushion pad instead of sitting on the uh, a hard log or something like that I also forgot to mention that I'm bringing the 2018 uh, northbound AT guide um, I have a loose leaf copy of it and what I was planning on is either using it for planning out my through hike or just bringing small um, small sections of it and then just burning the pages or throwing out the pages as I go. So this is just the first 250 miles. But this kind of gives me some reference. I'm also taking the Gut Hooks uh, AT app. That one's real useful. I used it on a, um, a weekend hike and it worked really well. So I'm probably going to use that mostly, but this is kind of like a nice backup. Guys, um, this is pretty much what I'm going to be taking. I've been trying it out, testing it out for months. Some of this gear I've been using for years, so I, I really know that it works. And... I've really enjoyed using it all, and I think that it's going to work great on the AT. Um, starting in February 25th, the 10-degree uh, bag uh, well, it should be warm enough, and I have a lot of layers here too as well, um, so I should be good. Thanks for watching, guys.